the full policy board meeting for the RGV MPO. Roll call, please. Good afternoon, everyone. For the record, this meeting was uh, posted into um, the state's website and our website on Friday, May the 26th at noon. Roll call. Cameron County? Present. Hidalgo County? Present. City of Brownsville? City of McAllen? City of Edinburgh? City of Mission? City of Harlingen? City of Far? Star County? City of San Benito? Cameron County RMA? Hidalgo County RMA? Valley Metro? Texted Park District? We have quorum. Thank you. Uh, do we have any public comments? No public comments? No, All right, no, uh, well, let me let me take this opportunity to welcome Mayor John Cowan from the city of Brownsville. Mayor, welcome to the RGV MPO. Congratulations on your election. <clears throat> Item four, consent agenda, approval of minutes for the April 26, 2023 meeting. Any questions, corrections, or comments? If not, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Mayor Ambrosio, second by uh, Star County. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Uh, note for the record that uh, Mayor uh, from Edinburgh is, has arrived. Item two, I understand the individual is on his way, so we'll yes. come back to that. Yes. Item three, discussion, possible action on the RGV MPO complete streets policy. Clarissa. Good morning, Transportation Policy Board. My name is Clarissa Gonzalez. I am a Transportation Planner One with the RGV MPO. It is my honor to present a draft of the RGV MPO Complete Streets Policy, seen in today's packet. I must begin by giving credit to my predecessor, Christopher Nelson, for reviewing other Complete Streets policies and drafting this version of the policy alongside RGV MPO staff. This complete streets policy was federally mandated to be produced by MPO staff in the Infrastructure Investment Jobs Act, also known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, or BIL. This is the policy. It's um, the proposed RGV MPO complete streets policy is a policy that ensures a transportation network is planned, designed, constructed, and operated while intently prioritizing the safety, comfort, and connectivity to destinations for people of all ages and abilities. A goal of this policy is to promote a region-wide integrated multimodal transportation network that is safe for the elderly, the young, the commuters without a driver's license or a personal vehicle, um, cyclists, motorcyclists, freight trucks, and everyone else on the public right of way. The BIL states that the MPO must spend at least 2.5% of planning funds to carry out a complete streets planning activities. A planning activity described in the BIL is a development of a complete streets policy, which is what we have provided today. In February of 2022, the policy board was in agreement for the RGV MPO to work on a complete streets policy. In May of 2022, the policy board adopted the UPWP amendment number two, which allocated around 120,000 towards complete streets planning activities over a two year budget period. Over the past year, the RGV MPO staff has been in coordination with planning partners regarding existing and future complete streets policies to determine strengths and weaknesses seen in those policies. Staff made an inventory list of existing complete streets policies adopted by local governments. Now RGV MPO staff has produced a region-wide complete streets policy and we are looking towards the technical advisory committee and the transportation <coughs> policy board for feedback on this regional policy this May. We are in the middle of public involvement phase for this policy and plan to create plan to incorporate feedback for uh, hopeful approval by the policy board in June. A goal of this region-wide strategy is to formulate best practices that can be adopted by each local government. The policy itself has these five subsections. 
a background that is uh, that mentions how it is federally mandated, a definition as worded in the BIL, a policy statement with regional vision of safe multimodal transportation, and a description of requirements, recommendations, design guidance, and exceptions. The policy states that it can use bike ped counter data as a method of performance measurement. As for implementation, the policy states that the RGV MPO will ensure the directives of this policy are reflected in ongoing planning and programming work by reviewing project applications and monitoring current projects for compliance with the policy. The milestones for the RGV MPO complete streets policy are as follows. On May 11th, the policy was presented to the technical advisory committee and met with positive feedback. As of May 11th, we began 30 days of public involvement for the Complete Streets Policy. On May 17th, staff presented the RGV MPO Complete Streets Policy at the Veterans Clinic here in Wessego. One public comment recommended that a phrase from the list of exceptions on page four be excluded. An exception to this policy states that scores will not be reduced if the project is unable to include bike ped accommodations because the cost of providing that infrastructure is excessively disproportionate to the need or likely use. This public comment was responded to within 24 hour time frame as regulated in the RGV MPO public participation plan. RGV MPO staff will bring this as an action item up for approval for the transportation policy board next month in June, followed by implementation. Furthermore, upon the will of the policy board, staff can establish a number of subcommittee meetings which would be advantageous in supporting municipalities with the development and implementation of complete streets policies. Uh, the RGV MPO complete streets policy is open for discussion and I have provided my contact information if anyone would like to submit feedback regarding this policy. Thank you all for your time. Anyone have any questions? This is a great initiative, and uh, City of Brownsville does have a complete streets policy. Great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we took uh, into consideration that existing policy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, can I have a motion to acknowledge the, re the report? Anyone? Motion. motion by Hidalgo County, seconded by Star County. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item four, discussion on FY 2022 annual project listing. Oh, before I forget, let me congratulate Mayor Hernandez also on his re-election. Thank you. Any, I was just checking right now since John, you were new, but he's he's old school, so <laughs> <laughs> he's been around. Veterans are veterans. Yeah, veteran, veteran. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Good afternoon, policy board members. Our 2022, that's fiscal year 2022, annual project listing is currently under public involvement, which began on May 11th and will run through June the 11th. These documents will be available on our website, and RGV MPO staff is available to address any comments, questions, or concerns with these projects. Within the packet today, what I included was an example of three types of projects that we receive through the annual project listing, not including the transit, which we do work with our transit providers to go ahead and go through a clearing house and review on the staff side, and then we'll share that information with the finance and planning and programming division with Austin as well as the FAR district. But for examples today, the highway projects that are listed here, the arrows are pointing to what we look at, which is the amount of federal funding programmed in the MPO TIP, which we verify on the actual STIP portal. We also have the amount of federal funding obligated per fiscal year, and for this instance, it's fiscal year 22. So we verify that via federal transaction reports. And then any remaining amount of funding can still be uh, assigned to that project and through obligation we will get those reports when those funds are extinguished. The second example is a bicycle pedestrian project and you can see where you'll have the category funding of nine TAP which is an abbreviation for transportation alternatives and on the next example are group projects in this case for instance safety is a uh, funding category that is grouped currently. So we just wanted to provide examples for you, let you know that public involvement is still underway. This is where you can find the documents on our website. There's a direct link in, in this packet. If not, you can visit our news page and we have virtual public involvement meetings set up for the APL. The three documents you will find are the flyer, which announces the actual dates, what's being covered, and our in-person location, which was held previously on May 17th, and it was actually here at this location. 
So we also have the APL the way we received it, as well as a version with our staff comments. So if there's any questions, concerns, or comments, you could share those with me now or just let us know before public involvement is over because these documents will be coming back next month for approval. When will public involvement be over? Uh, June the 11th, Chairman. Anyone else have any questions or comments? You're not gonna have a motion to acknowledge the report. Motion by Hidalgo County, second. second by City of Far. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank and you. Since, and since I'm doing this one at a time, let me also congratulate uh, Mayor Rick Gatta from San Benito on his reelection. Mayor, congratulations. But again, you've been around us for a while. That's why you're we take you for granted. <laughs> He's seasoned, yeah. remember? He's seasoned, seasoned. There you go, thank you, Mayor. All right, item five. Discussion and action to approve the Federal Functional Classification Los Ebenos Drive in the City of Mission, CSJ number 0921-02-521. Luis. Yes, sir. Um, good afternoon. <clears throat> well, I'm included in your packet is actually a resolution for Los Ebanos Road in the City of Mission. So the project limits are from I-2 to Military Parkway, but the whole span of the project is not being requested for functional classification. It's only the southern portion. So if you see up on the map, up on the screen, you see the project is right there, right next to the sign where it says I-2 to the left. That is um, Los Evanos Road. So the top portion from I-2 down to, 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 to mile one south has already been functionally classified as a major collector. So therefore, the southern portion, which is from mile one south down to Military Parkway, that's the portion that's being requested um, for functional classification as a major collector. So the resolution is included, and we're just asking for approval to, to continue with the process on to yeah. submitting this over to Tex.Far District. And after that, it goes over to Tex.TPMP in Austin. After approval there and review, it'll go over to FHWA, and then it'll come back the same way. It comes back the same um, levels back to us with a response. Why are we doing this? This is to functionally classify the oh, no, no, project. I know, but, but why? Yes, sir. Um, to get federal functional classification, which is what allows a project to be eligible for federal funding. Yes, sir. Recommending approval. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by uh, City of Edinburgh. Second. Second by CCRMA. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Item six, update on federal functional classification pending submittals. Yes, so these are the projects that we already have resolutions made out for. <coughs> um, we, have, we have in blue, those are the ones that are already being reviewed by FHWA, which are West Boulevard and South Parallel Corridor Phase Three. Those are the only two that are currently being looked at by the FHWA. Um, what's in green is what's in, has, it's, um, those are the ones that are with TPMP under review. So those are one step away from going from FHWA. And the yellow one is actually the Los Ebanos, which is the one that we're, um, we just approved the resolution for. So this one is at the first step on to going on to Tex.Far District after the packet has been put together. And what's in orange are the ones that the MPO is still reviewing. So those are the, this is the full list of the projects that are currently under um, review for federal functional classification. Um, if there are any questions on this process or any of these projects, I could take them at this time. Thank you, Pete. Yes, the coordination has been a lot better now. Um, we get a lot of um, responses back from TPMP as far as the updates as the FC projects are progressing, which is a really good thing, and it allows us to coordinate a lot more in, throughout the process for anything that may need revision. And I wanted to add one more thing that I failed to mention. Um, International Drive, which is the Stark County project, and also Russell Road, those are expected to go on to FHWA this week. Once we hear back, we'll update this list and send it out with an update. But as of now, those are still with um, TPMP. Anyone else? 
the only comment or question uh, yes. I, I have, Luis, is the fact that, um, and I'm not pointing fingers, we just know that any delays in, get, in, in obtaining these classifications, submittals, uh, approval is delaying, obviously, the projects, which is obviously going to cost local government more and more money as, as uh, construction delayed is, is, uh, is costing all of us more money. So keep that in mind, I guess. If there's anything that we can do to assist in, in getting this approved on a, on a faster track, uh, let us know. For sure. It's getting better. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, Carol, motion to acknowledge the report. Motion by uh, Textot, second by San Benito. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Item seven, is, is it here? Is it first? Okay. Item seven, discussion possible action on TASA, also known as Category 9 Project, info POS action. RGB MPO staff will present status on F-19. Sorry, sorry, we're in, running, I'm reading my notes. <laughs> Close. Go ahead, Al. Um, good afternoon, members of the policy board. Uh, thank you for your attention today. Uh, I did include this time around um, some key terms and what the transportation planning meaning is, más o menos, uh, related to those terms, and that's just to help um, with, with new members that we have currently on the board. And even if you're a veteran, I think they're helpful to have on hand. And season. Some season, 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 season. Yeah. Um, and we have some commonly used acronyms as well to assist with that because we do use acronyms all the time. Um, but really what we're here today is to continue this conversation we've been having regarding um, obligating the funds related to Category 9 or Transportation Alternative Set-Aside program funds. And so the list that we're looking at ahead of time were what I call inherited projects from the Brownsville MPO and the Hidalgo County MPO days, um, but they're from fiscal year 2019 and 2020. And so we've been monitoring these projects. We have been having multiple conversations if you're new to the board about um, what the timeline needs to be in order to obligate these funds on times, and that's what the schedule of activities is. Uh, we're currently in May 2023, and so most of these projects should already be working to be ready to let um, with their 100% plans, their bid documents, and their final project certifications as part of that. And so that's that June goal, and that June goal is really meant so that we could submit federal participation authorization agreements and state letter of authority requests um, to TxDOT and FHWA respectfully um, by July. And the reason why we do that is because they're all getting ready for their new fiscal year and funding and they get busy and the turnover time for those FPAAs and SLOAs can be about four weeks if not more depending. Um, and of course we all take summer vacations and all these things. So the June deadline is what we're working towards and this is an update regarding those projects. The first project I have here for you is the Hidalgo County Mobility Plan. This is the LRGVDC's um, county-wide plan. And so the procurement plan has already been approved. Bid documents have been reviewed. And from what I understand, revisions have been made and they're pending approval. But we should be able to be moving forward with that shortly. Um, or within our time frame. Uh, the city of McAllen has a Jackson Road hike and bike and they've been working with the city of Edinburgh and I'd like to um, applaud their coordination together because there is some right, uh, railroad coordination. This is the old original project map. Um, you can see I'm putting information for everyone about some changes that have been approved, when they were approved, and the corresponding resolution regarding those changes. Um, but you can see here, there are some other connections now. The project has been revised and ultimately the 808,000 is gonna be um, building or constructing these three segments here. And so everything looks great. They're working on the night of the, they, I think we just had a meeting last week in McAllen um, and they're working on their 95%. I know the comments are, are coming in and TxDOT is moving quick. They got some help for the review since things are bottlenecking at this time frame. Um, but that being said, we have our railroad cost estimates and I think all they're pending is the agreement. And so we'll see how that proceeds with those project certifications. But for the city of FAR, everything is moving great. Um, their team has some sections. They're working on the 95%. There were some minor sections that changed and that was to help the city uh, with some railroad coordination that they wouldn't have to do with these new sections. But the, the intent of the project continues. Um, the city of Brownsville has two phases. Phase one, it, the Brownsville to Los Fresnos Connect is um, proceeding. You can see some new project maps with their new alignment. It was originally planned for the drainage district, but due to some right-of-way concerns, they're now working with TxDOT um, for utilizing their right-of-way for this project. Um, and for phase two, we're seeing some concerns as well, but we're gonna be coming back to you in June to see if there's any changes from this month to next month uh, regarding this project. 
Um, the city of Los Fresnos has already received their, uh, I think that they already submitted their final project certifications, if I'm not mistaken, um, Cameron County, sh no, the city of Los Fresnos should be submitting their FPA and SLOA request soon. Um, and you can see we also made some minor modifications from the original project map. Uh, Cameron County Old Methyl Sidewalks Project. We've had some design concerns and I'm not sure we've reached a resolution to, the, to these concerns and so I might be coming back in June as well just on these two projects um, that I've mentioned here. But you can see we're also making some adjustments um, to help the, the local government with that, uh, developing that project. Um, and Cameron County, everything that from my understanding is moving forward with the Las Palmas Sidewalk um, again, we've made some minor changes to the original map, but uh, everything looks good. They're working toward the 95 and 100% design plans. And then the UTRGV has been really interesting um, in a good way. Uh, I think UTRGV is used to doing their own system, the UT way, and so it's been fun to kind of work with them and Texod and navigate new bid documents, but everything is proceeding and they're pending, they're pending their final project certifications. So that was it for the 2019-2020 project list. Are there any questions before I proceed? to the next group of projects. Yeah, I have a question for you about the project plan. Sure. Did you have to redesign the uh, sidewalk? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Can you tell me what the issue is there? Um, I'm on the city of McAllen-Jackson Road? No, I only have the pending agreement there for uh, railroad. From my understanding, in our meeting last week, they wanted some updates to the utility matrix. I remember the Texas utility coordinator being with us, um, but those changes should be being made. I'm not aware of any major concerns. So the, the reason why it says pending agreement was, or any conflicts was more related to the railroad coordination. And that is on the city of Edinburgh side, um, the railroad. But from my understanding, utilities matrix just needs to be updated. Any other uh, questions on these projects, this group of projects? Okay, hearing none, again, uh, you likely won't be seeing this group of slides anymore um, unless we have some major changes to, to give you. And so far, most of our projects are on, on track for obligating their funds. Um, for fiscal year 2021, 2022, next month, I'll be coming back to you with some project slides like we just showed for the last group. But this, these projects were awarded funds in September of 2021, right? We are now May 2023. And most of these projects have already gotten their if. Um, AFA, Advanced Funding Agreement. And I'm not sure on the city of Brownsville's AFA, they might have already gotten it agreed. Not yet, almost. It's on Texas side. So there's a couple back and forth, but from my, from my understanding, um, there, there has been a little bit of turnover, I think, on the contract services, but uh, we're just pending two more advanced funding agreements. I'm gonna start reaching out as now that we're kind of wrapping up the last group. Um, so that we can get some project kickoff meetings if they haven't already been kicked off. And if this is one of your communities, Edinburgh, Carlingen, Hidalgo, Elsa, um, let them know it's time to kick off those project meetings with TxDOT. And as the project sponsor, they should be leading that effort. Um, and this is their schedule of activities so far. I did put here between May and July of 2023, there is the potential to reprogram funds for projects without executed AFAs. All of our AFAs are look like they're gonna be executed by next month, so I don't anticipate that. Um, but I do like to put these little gifts here um, or these little icons that we're aiming to obligate our funds in 2024 fiscal year. Um, and you can still obligate funds in 2025, but anything after September 2025 is an F plus. <laughs> plus for trying, but an F for not making the deadline. Um, but that's all I have for you today. Are there any questions regarding the fiscal year 21 and 22? TASA projects? All right, thank you so much. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep, yep, I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. I just wanna make sure, um, part of the issue, and you just alluded to it a moment ago, is the fact that we're waiting on TxDOT on some of these to, to, uh, to approve that way we can get them let. Yeah, I do believe that, from my perspective, what's happening is that there's bottle, bottlenecking around these time frames, and I think TxDOT needs some more staff support, but yes, there's, Definitely some waiting on both sides. Rack them and stack them. I remember somebody saying that. <laughs> so, so, um, Pete, please let's. If you know, again, it's just a cost issue. If they're ready to go and we're just l waiting on text dot, <coughs> please help us uh, get that taken care of. All right. Anybody else? Is this? It says possible action. Do we need to uh, vote on approval or just acknowledge? You can acknowledge it. All right. And our motion to acknowledge. Motion by Hidalgo County, second. 
Second by City of Far, all in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, have a good day. Item eight, discussion possible action on proposed projects to meet TxDOT deadline for carbon reduction program CRP. Yes, sir. Um, out of the new transportation bill came a program called the Carbon Reduction Program. Uh, we were made aware of this some time back. Uh, the transition. We were made aware of this and uh, started working on some ideas for projects. Uh, we were caught off guard a little bit that um, TxDOT wanted us to submit a listing of all projects for the four-year horizon. We were operating under the pretense that we had to operate and come up with one year. Nonetheless, we've had several meetings with TxDOT and several um, of the local governments found here at the table. We've worked with your staff and we appreciate it. There is a table contained in your packet. I believe it. this table here that you see on the screen. The money can be used for non-added capacity projects, which means we can't do it for any new roadway projects, no widening the roadway projects um, and projects of that nature. So we have several projects throughout the region that we were able to reach out to project sponsors um, and talk to about what they did have, what was gonna be ready to go, projects that were um, shovel ready, if you will, and close to that. So just taking a brief moment, I'll walk through some of these. Um, and the total amount available is $26 million, 26.5. So we had conversations. Uh, I spoke with the people at the city of FAR. Uh, city of FAR has a project that Federal Highways really loves the idea of. It's, uh, it's a staging area, but we're calling it a parking lot for the FAR bridge. This money is 100% eligible for that project. Um, it gives the truck somewhere to go and park and shut down, help with the reduction of the carbon footprint. So that's one project that we are recommending. This project is ready to go. Uh, we also have a Stinger sidewalk project uh, within Cameron County is to construct a 10 foot wide uh, sidewalk from uh, business 77 to Fannin Street. Uh, that project is also ready to go. And then moving uh, a year out, Southmost Nature Trail, we visited with the city of Brownsville on this project. Uh, we think that's a good one also. It's uh, gonna be ready to go on time and falls within the criteria. And then we have two light sig signalization uh, recommendations. The Hidalgo County MPO, uh, a few years back obviously, uh, did something very similar where the board allotted $1 million of category seven for signalization. And it was a very successful project we were able to work with FAR, Mission, Edinburgh, and McAllen on purchasing new loops, uh, control panels, control boxes, I mean, excuse me, and ge uh, uh, geosynchronous clocks for the various staging and signalization that we would do with their programs. Uh, staff is recommending $945,000 in each one of the areas, I believe, if there's another slide. Um, no, okay. Um, but there is a listing that we have gone over with Steve Taylor with Coplan as part of the congestion study that we're doing now. And we've identified several corridors uh, throughout the region that would benefit everything from Brownsville, uh, Edinburgh, McAllen, Mission, and far away of additional cabinet purchases. Uh, there it is on the screen, I apologize. Uh, of course, McAllen being the lease amount because they just went through their bond program and updated almost every one that they had um, and Brownsville having the greatest amount of need, being the largest city in the valley, they have the least amount of loops and detection systems. So we want to help with that, and we feel that this falls right in with the carbon reduction because instead of having vehicles sit there at 10 o'clock at night waiting on a red light because it's not detecting it, we can implement some detection systems and it turn green and we can get the vehicles and the traffic flowing. So that's the staff recommendation on that. Uh, Southmost Nature Trail phases... Uh, um, um, Three, four, and five are on here as well. Uh, that's something we can shift money around and be able to get this project moving forward and they're gonna be ready to go. Uh, Los Fresnos hike and bike trail system within the city of Los Fresnos. We had a meeting with the CCRMA and the city of Los Fresnos on this. Uh, another very good project that they need some additional assistance with. So staff is making the recommendation for the $3 million. And then we've had various conversations with the city of Brownsville for bus curbs uh, for cutouts, if you will. Uh, as some of you may be aware, when we have four lane roadways, two in each direction, if we have a bus stop, that means the bus is taking up 50% of the roadway. Thus, we have traffic building up behind it. 
buildup of carbon. If we can have curb cuts where we can move those buses out of the way of traffic, it'll allow traffic to flow, continue, and then be able to have an egress for that bus out. So staff is recommending approval. This is something for um, transparency sake that was not taken to the technical advisory committee because we were made aware of the deadline after the TAC meeting. So we certainly would have done that. I do have it on the agenda to discuss with TAC next month, but stack is, staff is recommending approval for the $26.5 million in proposed carbon reduction projects that are listed before you. Andrew, in essence, we'd be uh, dipping into this fund and allowing uh, the use of the other CAT 7 funds for other means? In some instances, local governments have let us know that they would like to reallocate their CAT 7, and in some, they've actually just surrendered it so we can go towards making up that negative balance that we have. We are flexible either way since the funding was already allocated to a present project that if the local government has another one they want to move it to, we certainly want to work with them to move those funds over to another project. But you're, you're recommending approval, and we've got a deadline of today. Today, yes, sir. So we've got to do this to take advantage of this program. Yes, sir, we do. All right. And I do apologize for the short notice and for not having it before the advisory committee beforehand. I don't know if it's okay if I add, but I think we're going to go through revision cycles um, like we regularly do, right, in case yes. we need to make changes. But we've got no, to that's submit. a good point. But for right now, we need to move forward with submit. this if the board so chooses. Okay. Well, Anybody? We have a motion to approve it. Second. Second by a text thought. Was there any other, any other questions or comments? If not, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item... Five. Uh, is uh, the individual here yet? Or they no? should be here momentarily. Okay. If you All right. Like that RGB MPO up. Executive Director's Report and Update. Yes, sir, because this one will take a little bit longer than normal, but not too long. Um, one, I would like to remind everybody, I hope that you did receive notification and the invite that our TxDOT Commissioner, Alex Mead, will be at TxDOT tomorrow for a, an introduction and meet and greet two to four at the FAR District offices. I assume that will be in the building in the back, Pete. In the district conference center so please if you have time come out and help us uh, meet the new tech stock commissioner uh, give us an opportunity to be able to visit with him I know everybody at the table already knows uh, um, Alex but it'd be a nice opportunity to have a, a something more formal please Um, so please uh, be there if you can. Uh, our budget is on the screen. We are 64% expended. We should be at 75, excuse me, 54% expended. We should be at 75. That is coming up slowly uh, with the contracts that we do have out, and those will continue to come in. We have two transit studies, one with Brownsville, one with McAllen, uh, that should finish up. And then, of course, our studies that we have underway for the resiliency planning, the uh, performance management, uh, those will all come to a close by this fiscal year as well, so we'll have that. Uh, we discussed the carbon reduction. I do have a video uh, to show you. TxDOT has an initiative of the industry, and I know that probably everybody at the table has heard about this. And the reason I bring this to the policy board today is, one, I think it's informative, and two, I'm looking for assistance with anybody who knows anyone who may own a pro league team. I don't know, the Toros, the Vipers, anybody who might own a team like that. The, so we could maybe look at making some regional videos for ourselves. Uh, Dallas has really gone out of the gate with it fast. I serve on the uh, statewide safety task force, and it's something that they're looking to try to implement regionally. I told the new mayor I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to do it. It makes sense that they have the Cowboys because they can't hit anything. So um, hopefully, that's, that's right. That's that's right. I put it out there. So, <laughs> but we'll show the video, and I, I would like to explore honestly the opportunity to look at uh, trying to do something for us regionally. And I can't help it. It's the Cowboys. So, somebody press play quick while I still have a job. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I think we have an opportunity to try to do something like that locally. I, th I think it would be good. It's, it's unreal to me that in 2023, our largest amount of fatalities are still coming from no seatbelts. I, I don't understand that, uh, but it is something that we uh, are working on as part of the safety task force, and I think this is a way for us to get the word out. They are asking if we can. Of course, here in the Valley, we would try to do this in English and Spanish, and then the, the teams that uh, they are working with, they're also running it during their games. Uh, they've got the Rangers on board. Uh, I believe it's the Stars in Dallas, the hockey team. I apologize. Yeah. I don't follow hockey. Not a joke. I don't. I don't. So... Uh, the Dallas Stars, uh, so and others. So, uh, and I know that Houston is working on doing the same thing with the Astros and with the Texans. So, uh, I just bring that to you for consideration. Uh, if I may, we have an executive ticket uh, campaign. Yes. Ten percent of Texans do not vote for Lowe. So you may think ten percent. When you have twenty nine million people in Texas, that's not a focus. And so we we have a positive thing to do with that. Just an FYI. Thank you, Pete. Where's your, where's your cowboy jersey? Oh, oh, uh -huh. started something ugly. Um, and finally, what I have for the board is I need you all to get your cell phones out, if you would, please. Um, I'm asking board members to please go to minty.com. Uh, and once you're there, this will be your access code. If you can scan it from where you are, it's great. The reason of this is staff has been working on putting together an MPO 101 workshop. It's been a while, and we wanted to wait until after the May elections were complete so we had all of our new members at the table as well as our veteran members. Um, and our first question, once you have that, I'm sorry, did you not get that? We can back up. Back up one. Alrighty, so some are ahead of us, but please, uh, we have four dates that we've been able to identify in July that we think give us ample opportunity to try to work uh, with the policy board. One is actually on the 20th, which would be the day we would have our policy board meeting, but the board on our uh, calendar, we don't have any board meeting in July. So we put that because we didn't know if that would be something that would be beneficial for anybody that would already be here for the COG board meeting to be able to stay and attend that as well. And I have 14 members at the table, so we'll be looking for 14 votes before we proceed. I, I didn't call anybody out, man. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. The Dallas uh, thing, I, I feel the warmth over here. You know about the rule about holes? Andrew, when you're in one, quit digging. Yes, sir. My <laughs> wife tells me that frequently. All right, that's all 14, so we're looking at the 20th. We appreciate that. Actually, it's higher now. I don't know how we got 16, but <laughs> 17. <laughs> Next slide before we keep going up, please. And this is for your benefit. Um, I know some uh, off the top of my hair, I, head, I know Mayor Hernandez has sat through one of these before when we did it over at the COG. Um, it can be long, but staff can condense it. It just will rely on you to read the materials that we will provide because it doesn't give us ample opportunity to go through it all but we'll try to do the footnotes as much as we can respecting that everybody's time is very valuable and some of you have two and three jobs as well as being elected officials all right so we're looking at the 20th for two hours I'd say two and a half then. Yeah. We will do our best to keep it at two and a half then. We'll split the difference. So on the 20th, at two and a half hours, um, the only other thing um, 
we were looking for. Was that, that was going to be in the morning or the afternoon? Let me look at my calendar for that day, sir. No. That's what I'm thinking because I think that's the day that follows the cog board meeting. If they have one. Is there one on the 19th? Is there one on the 19th? The cog is Manuel, Manuel, is that the date of y'all's meeting? No. The oh, y'all do the 26th. Yeah, 26. the 26th. Yeah, that's what I thought. This yeah. week before. And we chose which day? The 20th. The, the 20th. So Thursday. Thursday. That's perfectly fine. We afternoon. can do that. Yeah, but morning or, or afternoon? Um, well, I didn't think to ask morning or afternoon, so is there a preference? Anyone? Afternoon. afternoon? Okay. We are trying to find a location. This room is not very advantageous to what we would like to do. Uh, there is a facility uh, in FAR, Mayor, before he leaves, uh, at FAR 1. Uh, we will be reaching out to them. It's a large classroom, and it has a smart board, which would allow us. And we'll be reaching out to uh, Federal Highways to see if they can attend with us with our tech stop partners. And I'm actually going to reach out to my uh, good friend, uh, Ashby Johnson, who does what I do in Austin, and see if he can make it down for that as well so we can have some other perspectives as we work through this. That's true, too. Yeah. So we'll do the 20th, two and a half hours in the afternoon, and I will get out the information to everyone, and we'll have a booklet for you there. We will not send that out in advance because it'll be quite large. So I'll have that printed out for everybody the afternoon of the workshop. We appreciate it. We think it's important. Is something staff has been working on for several months, and like I say, we just wanted to wait until the May elections were done uh, so we could include everybody. With that, Judge, unless there's any questions, I don't have anything else. I will tell you that uh, Mr. Albert with TPI is here. Sure. That's, that's not a problem at all. You're done with your presentation? Yes, sir, unless there's any other questions. I can. It'll be quite large. But if that's what you would prefer, Mayor, I'd be glad to send it to you. We could probably well, it put would, it, it would into benefit a because we'd have some opportunity or time to take a look at it ahead of time. Okay. We'll try to get everything into a Dropbox then for everybody and do it that way. Oh. Yes, sir. All right. No further questions for Andrew. All right, we'll come back to item number two, presentation on tech stop freight planning, Rio Grande Valley traffic management strategies to support surface freight. Mr. Albert. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Luke Albert. Um, I'm joined by my colleague, Margaret Fowler, and we work for, we work for Tech Same Transportation Institute. We're working on a project for the uh, TxDOT freight planning branch with the purpose of assessing traffic management needs in the in the Rio Grande Valley. This project was initiated following recommendation in the TxDOT Rio Grande Valley Freight Trade and Transportation Plan to establish a bi-national traffic management center in this region. And our goal for today's presentation is to provide some background information about our project, obtain, obtain stakeholder feedback from this group, and also um, to discuss um, Take off feedback to discuss potential potential um, areas of need and also strategies to implement in this region. And also, we have a survey at the end with a QR code that can also be used to provide feedback as well. Shown this side are project goals. Um, the first thing we have done is we have reviewed um, plans such as the border transportation plan from TxDOT, the Rio Grande Valley Freight Trade and Transportation Plan. And also, we have met with uh, the the, di the far district. We also met with the uh, uh, TAC, the TAC for this uh, Rio Grande Valley MPO, and just to uh, um, assess the the traffic management needs in this um, region. And then um, the next step that we're working on now is we're identifying strategies that would benefit freight mobility in the region. And then finally, we're going to identify steps to implement the strategies and and the role of a traffic management center in the deployment of these strategies. And just um, 
this, uh, some background, a traffic management center would be, would be a central location in the region that TxDOT would manage um, to use to monitor traffic and and to manage traffic. You would monitor traffic through devices, through cameras. You'd manage traffic through information dissemination, through message signs, um, through other other methods, through traffic signal um, strategies as well. And it'd be a, also a facility that would use a multi-agency coordination for incident response. Um, shown this slide is a, a dashboard that we put together. It's a web interface dashboard. It has a uh, truck delay, uh, truck flow. It's got several different layers that have uh, text dot from the text dot crash database. It uh, has you know the crash hotspots and also has the the planned um, project tracker. Like I said, it's a web interface that we've used as our, for our data analysis part of this project to identify the areas of most need based on the data. And then from our data analysis, as well as from our meetings with um, like the district and the, the, the MPO TAC, um, we have um, identified some areas of interest in this region. Um, obviously, uh, the FAR bridge area is a big area for freight traffic management needs. Um, with the uh, through traffic prohibited on Cage Boulevard, um, the north-south corridors on either side of Cage Boulevard carry a lot of freight traffic to get between the border and, and um, I-2, and as well as the east-west corridor of Military Highway, another east-west corridor that's come up is Dicker Road, as well as the, the freeway corridors there have a lot of um, congestion and also crashes the IH-2 and I-869C in this area. Uh, the major projects that are going on, such as the 365 Tollway and the International Bridge Trade Corridor, will certainly help move um, freight traffic um, from the local streets and on these facilities. But there's still in this area um, going to be a lot of freight needs with all the freight-related businesses in um, along here. Some other uh, areas of interest is the IH2 USA3 um, area, as well as, uh, uh, as well as uh, out, um, west, as well as the uh, Ansel Duas bridge expansion in that area. And with the bridge expansion obviously allowing um, full full trucks to um, come through, that's gonna certainly change the freight um, traffic in that area. Then we also have in the Veterans Bridge, Port of Brownsville area, I-869E, US-77 um, corridor, SH-48 and SH-550, as well as the US-281 um, a, a, a military highway near the Free Trade Bridge is another one that's come up. And then finally, um, the U.S. outside the MPO region, but certainly within this area, is the U.S. 281 SH 285 um, intersection, which has a lot of freight traffic as well. So in summary, um, some of the, what we've identified for challenges is the highest truck volumes are near the busiest international bridges in the, in the port area, significant uh, congestion and crash hotspots there. But there's also in some rural areas significant freight traffic as well. I've got a list here of some potential strategies that have risen to the top um, <laughs> as far as some of our analysis has gone and some of our discussions. Information dissemination is always important. Um, you know, construction and incident restrictions such as lane closures, getting that information out there through either message signs, through other means, social media, that kind of um, methods. Uh, Q warning is another one where you have um, fast traffic coming down to a very slow condition, getting some advanced notification about the, the queuing ahead. Of course, in this area, the border wait times is always something that's good to have information about. And then uh, as far as signal timing goes, the freight strategies um, geared towards freight signal timing is another one. Um, freight signal time would help move freight traffic through these areas, but also would help with lessen the deterioration of pavement from all the stopping of trucks at these intersections. Uh, another one with all the construction going on now and planned smart work zones is where you implement um, technology related um, s solutions to help move uh, traffic through work zones. And like I said, with a lot of construction coming up, that's a, that's a big opportunity. And then incident clearance is, a, is an important um, strategy as well. Not only um, you know, reducing delay from the incident, but also helping to reduce, clearing incidents quicker helps reduce reduce those secondary crashes caused by incidents. So um, I have, <coughs> this, this is our final slide. It's got a, a QR code on it with a survey, but there's also some questions here that, that we, um, we can either have some discussion with the group 
or we can um, just have the uh, survey responses, but we have some questions here to go, um, like I said, what corridors have the most critical freight traffic management needs? We've identified a lot of corridors in these last few slides. Um, so maybe some of those are the highest priority. Maybe there's some other ones that we need to point out. And then as well as what strategies provide the most benefit from the strategy that's went through. And then are there any planned trade zones or industrial developments to be aware of? Because um, those types of, develop, th those types of um, implementations certainly affect freight activity. And like I said, that's my entire presentation. It, right, this is a, the TxDOT freight planning branch is doing like a needs assessment. At that point, it would then kind of, you know, go through the potential funding process. Right now, it's determining strategies and needs and the benefit of the traffic management center. The 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 project is this this project is funded out of like the TxDOT um, Austin you know um, administration. Is the, this project is funded by the TxDOT administration Austin. And the Pete, freight planning. The freight don't, planning. Don't have the day to speak up. If you have a plan, we'd, we'd happily take a plan and, and look at some of the recommendations, some of, you know, some of the needs in, in your area that have um, been identified in that plan. So um, I can um, send an email, maybe to the MPO to, to, to get my email address out there, or you can, you can figure out a way to, to connect us to, make, to get that plan. Uh, I assume I serve on the Border Trade Advisory Committee and that this is taking into consideration a master plan that we adopted I guess two years now yes sir yeah the, the, we have the the border um, Texas Mexico border the Texas Mexico border master plan yeah, right. is part of our review of you know that that plan the Rio Grande Valley freight trade and transportation plan there's been a number of different plans that are, okay. um, that are taken into account in our in our um, literature review. I just want to be sure because I think we identified some of those critical corridors in there. Mm -hmm. and it took us about five years <laughs> to get yes, that sir. adopted. No, so. We certainly want to build on what was done there for sure. Thank you so much for pointing that out. No, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you for the presentation, Mr. Albert. Back to our agenda status reports from TxDOT project status report.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clemente Mena. I'll be presenting for the, the status report for the Far Area Office. Um, okay, so we're starting off with a Nittler Road project uh, that is spans about 1.2 miles west of FM 88, going north towards Delta Lake. Uh, this project is about $1.5 million, and uh, it's a bridge replacement and also replacement of the approaches leading up to the bridges. There's two locations, two different bridges, location one and location two, as you can see on the screen. The project is currently being constructed by Foremost Paving Incorporated, <coughs> and it's about 73% complete, with an estimated completion date in September 2023. Here you can see the existing bridges, pictures of the existing bridges. Um, they had it, the existing pile foundations for these bridges were timber, so they were very, uh, old and weak already, so that got demolished and it is now being um, reconstructed as you will see here in the next couple of slides. Uh, the rails on these bridges were very small, so obviously not as safe, and uh, well, that was the existing conditions. Uh, the new bridges look like these. Um, these are pictures of them. So we have the bigger, uh, heftier rail system on these bridges, concrete. The, they are sitting on 24 inch drill shaft foundations and columns. Uh, as you can see, the asphalt leading up to the bridges is a lot wider, safer for 24, uh, sorry, two 12 foot lanes, one on each way, and then also five foot shoulders. Uh, we provided some riprap on these bridges, so this project is going along very well. The next project is FM 492. Uh, this one is in Palm View. Um, it is point 25 miles south of I-2. Um, this project is approximately uh, just under $2 million on the budget. And um, the existing bridge there at location one has already been demolished by Texas Corte Construction. Uh, the project was at 13% complete when the presentation was put together. Uh, it is now at about 30% complete and it has an estimated completion date on November 2023. As you can see here, uh, the, the existing bridge has been demolished. The waterway is now open. The contractor was previously installing these sheet piles to prevent um, or to allow for the installation of the new drill shafts with the new bridge will sit on 24 inch drill shafts with girders. It will be a much heavier, much bigger uh, bridge that will sus uh, sustain the loads that will be going over this bridge. Um, here are some more bridge, uh, pictures of those, uh, the installation of those piles there. Uh, we work closely with AEP to prevent any uh, additional power outages in the area to the uh, residents there. Uh, there was some minor power outages when we had that storm at the beginning of May, or late April, early May, but that, had, that was restored and we worked with AEP and we got it back up and going. So to prevent any further outages, we work with them and that is now complete. The, going on to the next one is State Highway 100 and Ms. Jairo will be presenting that. Hi, good afternoon everybody. Um, I'm Yahaira Marroquin from the San Benito area office and I'm here to present to you uh, two of the projects that we have ongoing at the moment. Uh, SH 100 with limits of uh, South Mesquite Street to 565, uh, 67 feet east of Evano Street. Uh, the scope of work of the project is the rehab of existing roadway. Um, the contractor is Earthwork Enterprise, and this project is about 72% complete. Um, the estimated completion date for this project is June of 2023. Oi, sorry. There you go. Um, at the picture, you can see they're working on finalizing the, that base on the center lanes, the travel lanes. At the moment right now, they're uh, currently working on doing the traffic switch from the inside since that's completed to the outside lanes um, in, this, in this section. And they're also working on uh, concrete driveways along the south side of the project on throughout the project limits. Then we have South Parallel Corridor. Uh, this project, it's from, it has a limits from FM 509, Paso Real to FM 2520, which is some Houston Road. Uh, the scope of the work is the full new reconstruction of the project. And this is the contractor with foremost paving at about 79% complete. Um, the estimated 
uh, completion date for this project is August of 2023. <coughs> so in that picture, you can see uh, they're working on uh, installing some some of the prime um, before we do the hot mix. At the moment, right now, they're currently working on the final lift of hot mix uh, throughout the project. And on the next picture, um, the final seating throughout the project limits. So they're they're wrapping it up to to have it complete. Do you guys have any questions or comments? I have two questions, if I may, Pete. I'm sorry, it's not about any of these. I, I was wondering the La Jolla bypass. What about Cameron? What about Cameron? He said he's out star. 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 <laughs> that would be three. <laughs> Just making sure. in three months. Three months. Okay. Now you got me still with two questions now. <laughs> what about the tie-in from the Edinburgh to McAllen? Because right now it's off to the frontage road. But the, so what happens to the lane that's making the U-turn? It won't be needed, so will that be, have availability to go no, forward? To go so it'll be two forward. lanes going forward back onto the expressway until you do the tie-in. Right. Okay. Um, and I had someone call and ask, because of the interchange project, is there any, and I don't think so, but is there any expectation to widen 495 at the interchange? No. Okay, I didn't think so either, and I just want to make sure I was accurate. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions? All right, thank you. All right, uh, Mrs. Pulwitha had to leave, so we're going to pass on to Cameron County RMA. Um, Hidalgo County RMA, Ramona, you're, you made it. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ramon Navarro. I am the Chief Construction Engineer for the Hidalgo County Regional Mobility Authority, and here to provide you with a brief overview of our two uh, priority projects. Uh, we are designated uh, or assigned the uh, Hidalgo County Loop. That's a $2.1 million loop that goes encompasses the, the county. And we are diligently working on the south side of this loop. Uh, the 365 project is currently in construction. Um, we've, uh, in affiliation with the 365, I'll get to the construction here shortly. We also just recently let the toll system integration project uh, this will be the all the, the electronic tolling uh, and pick up picking up of license plates, readings, um, et cetera. Uh, we signed on CSEC construction for a cost of approximately $11 million, and $13 million, excuse me, and uh, they have signed the contracts and we'll have them at the table next week. Uh, as far as the wetland mitigation project, this is a um, environmental justice project for all of the impacts we had with the right-of-way on 365. 
Uh, we have formally re received the plans and are reviewing the planting, uh, the plants list and water wells, et cetera, that's going in. We are, uh, we are questioning or having a survey with the local uh, uh, gardeners or the local uh, plant providers to see what is readily available to avoid any, um, any delays on this project if we do let it in the upcoming months and uh, have that in, in within, baked within the plan. This is the water well. This will be a uh, water well that will be able to provide water not only to our wetland mitigation project, but some of the farmers in the area that we uh, made uh, agreements with. So uh, District 19 would be in, a, in accompanying us in, in this water well. As far as the pr construction on 365, the project was led to Pullis Construction. Uh, they were issued the contract with 1,264 calendar days. We are currently in um, construction estimate 14. We've worked for approximately 25, 34% of the time, leaves us about two and a half, 2.3 years left, and we've uh, achieved 25% of construction. Um, people say, well, you're delayed. Well, we are, but we have what's called value engineering change proposals incorporated into this project. And uh, we just recently got news right now before I got here that the IBWC has given us the approval to uh, work within the levees and the floodways and all that good stuff that we were waiting on. So we will be going at uh, 100 miles an hour now instead of going at uh, 85. Uh, but um, this will uh, definitely have a reschedule. Uh, we'll be analyzing the data, pits, dirt, et cetera resources and sources and rescheduling the time and accommodating the, uh, the deadline. Uh, we do have a um, change order in place for the levy work along uh, Depot Road, or the southbound frontage at Spur 115, better known as 23rd Street. Uh, we did have in the plan to shut down that, um, that southbound road. However, we have incorporated a change order to leave this um, frontage road in place uh, due to the overall master plan. This will be achieved when we go to the ultimate build out and uh, that southbound uh, connectivity shall remain in place until we build ultimate build out, which is any time between 2032 and 2037 event as anticipated. Uh, the detour on Sherry Road remains in place. Uh, we're diligently working on um, the structures there, the 12 by 12 structures, we hope to have those completed by the end of this week. And uh, we continue working with the irrigation struct, the irrigation district 19 and a, a company, appeasing them with the, uh, with field outlets, uh, et cetera. We continue with uh, details with SETs, driveways. Uh, it has been a wet month. Mother nature has blessed us with water. Uh, unfortunately for the contractor, that's not a good thing. Uh, but we are working where we can. We are planning to uh, pave the west end of the project first, and uh, this will be from the Antalduas port up to South Benson Road, and we look at commencing this paving anytime between July and uh, September. Uh, we keep continue working with uh, drill shafts along the uh, canal bridge. This is on the east end of the project along uh, San Juan Road. As you can see, it's a messy process. Um, we we are able to work these items in the rain because of the fact that they're in the ground and um, we, they get dirty anyway. Uh, we continue with the uh, McCall closure. Uh, we are on track for opening the McCall Road on September. Uh, as you know, this has been a complete shutdown and uh, traffic has been bypassed onto Whalen Road and uh, we are working as fast as we can with getting that, uh, getting that accomplished with a whole total new intersection and hold new development in the area. Uh, this is a photo of the, uh, the, the drain um, along the back of the retaining wall and along High Line Road, and we are getting those walls up and continuing on with the High Line intersection. As far as IBTC, this project is the one that we just uh, discussed earlier about federalizing, and uh, we did get our uh, functional classification request in and hope to uh, move and proceed uh, rather quickly on this uh, as it will impact the schedule. This will be readjusted to accommodate the, uh, the federaliz federalization of the project. 
and uh, we will accompany the schedule to meet, make sure we meet the uh, September 2025 letting uh, as scheduled and programmed. Uh, there are details of the project within the report, cross sections uh, detailing the overall uh, schematic and uh, the other um, responsibility that the RMA covers is the overweight oversized corridor. Uh, we do this in partnership with TxDOT and uh, for the year we have accumulated approximately uh, $3 million, uh, issued 14,711 permits. You can see the dividend of uh, funds to each of the agencies. This month we were, um, we saw a drastic increase uh, in comparison to last year. We had an increase of 1,083 permits, uh, which is approximately 34%. People say, wow, what happened? Well, we had uh, the issues with the border crossings last year at this time, and um, that's why they see such a steep difference in, in the uh, in the numbers and for the month. Uh, as far as uh, the um, construction, construction economics, uh, lumber, as you know, when we were in the COVID phase skyrocketed and it has been plummeting here, although it has held its own because of inflation. But uh, just some numbers for y'all to relatively look at, uh, two by fours and plywood are uh, down drastically if you all are looking at uh, going forth with any building construction or modeling. That concludes my report. Any questions I can entertain at this time? Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. Item seven, other business old or new? Anyone? All right. Let me take this moment to, uh, if I can ask you all, I should have done this at the beginning of the meeting, but to have a moment of silence recognizing <clears throat> Mayor Beto Salinas from the City of Mission and former county commissioner. Um, I got to meet the uh, commissioner and mayor in the early 90s uh, after moving back, and uh, he, was a, he was a heck of a man and, and a very good mentor, and he got things done. So I'm sure the, the city of we joined the city mission in mourning his loss and with his family. So. Thank you. <clears throat> Item eight. Our next meeting will be scheduled June the 28th, 2023, at 1:30 p.m. here in the Ken Jones boardroom in Westlake Cove. Nothing further. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion by the text dot, second by arm. Uh, I'm sorry, City of Edinburgh. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you.